Justin Bloom. Today I will be demonstrating the proper installation procedures for a MUZ GE09MA outdoor unit heat pump along with the MSZ GE09 indoor unit. Choosing a location for the outdoor unit is very important. The best location is somewhere that won't be exposed to strong winds, dust, or debris. Also you want to make sure the outdoor unit is at least 10 feet away from any antenna or TV sets to avoid any possible interference. You should place the outdoor unit on a level surface and secure it so it will not fall or tip over. And if you're in an area that has snow drifts, the unit should always be mounted above the snow line. Place the indoor unit where the airflow can spread across the entire room with no air restrictions. Mitsubishi Electric recommends that the indoor unit be placed at least six feet above the floor on a sturdy surface like a wall or brick. The indoor unit should always be away from direct sunlight, at least three feet away from TVs or radios to prevent interference with reception. Main power to the outdoor unit should always be ran by a licensed electrician and be supplied with 208 230 volts AC power supply with proper grounding. The outdoor unit will power up the indoor unit with a three wire 14 gauge solid or stranded plus a ground from the outside S1, S2, S3 terminal block to the inside S1, S2, S3 terminal block. These wires are polarity sensitive wires and they must be 600 volt insulated copper conductors only. The GE09 uses a quarter inch liquid line and 3 8 suction line. In this installation I am using a 15 foot diamond back line set. If you need to join two line sets together by brazing, you must have nitrogen flowing during the brazing process to prevent oxidizing of the copper. For reference, the GE09 installation manual contains the approved line set lengths, height difference, and allowable number of 90 degree elbows that can be added to this system. We have the outdoor unit here mounted securely. When mounting the indoor unit, start by finding a good location to hang the installation plate. Center it on a wall and make sure that it is at least 2 and 3 8 inches from the ceiling line. We have a few different options as to where the refrigerant lines can come into the indoor unit. Basically, the line set can come through the center of the plate, out of the right side, or straight in the back from the left side of the unit. We've chosen to go through the center knockout plate and have the drain line go out the back. Consideration should be taken in the event you take the drain tubing a different route other than following the refrigerant lines. It should be gravity fed into a pump or a pipe straight outside with no P-traps. Now we'll hang the indoor unit. At the top of the indoor unit there are three open slots that will align with the wall bracket hooks. While you're aiming the indoor unit at this, make sure you have the line set going through your chase. Once the line set and drain tube are through the wall, you can proceed to hang the indoor unit on the wall bracket hooks. You may not want to snap the indoor unit into its locking position until you're done, as you might need to work behind the unit before completing the installation. We can now hook up the flare connections. When you connect the line set to the indoor unit and outdoor unit, Mitsubishi Electric recommends using a torque wrench to ensure proper tightness of the nuts. It's always a good practice to apply a thin coat of refrigerant oil on the seat surface of the pipe. This will prevent thermal ratcheting, which could cause leaks in the future. For the quarter inch liquid line, we recommend a 10 to 13 foot pounds of torque. And for the 3 8 suction line, we recommend 25 to 35 foot pounds of torque. Please see the installation manual for your specific model. You also want to make sure that you thoroughly insulate any exposed copper pipe to prevent condensation. Now that the system has been hooked up, it's time to pressure test the system. Currently, the keying valves are closed on both the liquid lines and suction lines so we can use the service port attached to the suction king valve to pressure test the system. We recommend pressure testing your MMP series equipment to at least 600 PSIG with nitrogen and run the test for no less than 24 hours to monitor pressure loss. Now we'll pull a triple evacuation. The best method for doing this is to pull the system down to 4,000 microns. Then break the vacuum with nitrogen, zero PSIG. Evacuate the system again to 1500 microns. Break again with nitrogen to zero PSIG. Evacuate again to 500 microns and allow to hold for one hour. Now that our system has held this vacuum of 500 microns for more than one hour, 
the system is free of both moisture and leaks. Now we can open the service king valves. Since our line set is under 25 feet, there is no need to add any additional charge. The nameplate of the outdoor unit will always advise you if any additional charge is needed, depending on the line set length. Now it's just a matter of tying up loose ends. Specifically, getting the electrical terminated, installing the panels, and starting up the system. To save time, you can work on the electrical section of the install while the system is being pulled into a vacuum. Checking system operation is always a good idea before leaving the new install to ensure the system is operating properly. You should always make your customer aware of what to expect with the system and how to operate the system. With this video, I hope now you have a better understanding of what is involved with the installation of this GE09 system. Thanks for watching our MMP installation video. We hope that you have found it informative. Mm -hmm.